Is, he, is your shoulder going to... Can you scoot over one? I think? Yeah, that'd be great. Gonna, your shoulder's going to be in its field of view. Basically, I'm an expert in business software. I previously was a CPA. Been doing this kind of work for the last 25 years. Somebody's there. Uh, I run a systems integration practice so, okay. in Southern California. What I'm going to do today is talk about how Bitcoin can get a particular implementation of Bitcoin in a modern financial system. What is modern financial system? Need to get a money. Well, it would be cloud based. We're talking about accounting, things like inventory management, orders, invoicing your customers. Receiving cash to pay bills and so forth, right? So I'm going to illustrate that. There's two key concepts that I'd like you to be able to take away from this talk. The first concept is about foreign currency accounting. For the purposes of this conversation, pragmatically, Bitcoin is a foreign currency. As treating it as a foreign currency, there's two key things that will emerge. One is you'll be able to make good assessments around your economic performance of working with it, trading with it. And two, you'll be able to meet your regulatory requirements because there's standards already in the marketplace for how to do foreign currency accounting. The second thing that I hope to show you today is that an integration that can be into a financial system will actually drop the cost of working with Bitcoin in such a way that we'll see major adoption happen, happen by larger organizations, which is what we really need in order for it to spread for, for adoption. So I think the best thing for me to do is do this in a demonstration. The demonstration, in order to work in a financial system, there's a number of things that need to come together, and I'm going to illustrate each one of these things. So let me just step through it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the exchange rates, right? It's going to be treated as foreign currency. We're going to talk about this, and I'm going to talk about it in the context of micro bitcoins and price updates. Switch, switch screens here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this financial system because I'm going to talk about points in the financial system. It's really not relevant to which financial system we're in. It's just this is concepts you can see. So the first thing I want you to see is that if we're going to be tracking prices, we're going to need in the financial system prices of Bitcoin. So here what we have is a exchange rate table and prior to, uh, prior to uh, uh, getting ready for this, I basically updated it with the latest prices as of 8 o'clock this morning. And at that point in time, the last price it was $122, $122 for USD. Basically, uh, an organization in a uh, Bitcoin world would likely update this table frequently, and that would run in the background maybe every 15 minutes. That's up to the organization to determine, right? Next thing I want to show is that in a modern financial system, this one actually supports 190 different currencies. We need to uh, we need a placeholder in the financial system for Bitcoin. What we've done here is we've taken or substituted a particular uh, we've substituted a currency because since since Bitcoin does not today have an ISO certification financial systems aren't necessarily ready to accept it. So what, we're, what we need to do is we need to substitute a currency for Bitcoin. In this case, I took the Thai bot as, a, as, as, a, as one of the currencies to substitute. I like the Thai bot because the symbol uses the fee, right? And, 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 we'll, and I'm not going to be trading the Thai bot normally in this organization, so I can work with that. What's important though is that financial systems are not used to the decimal points that we see in our Bitcoin. And so what we need to do is we need to, in this case, I convert it to micro Bitcoin, which is essentially six decimal places in. So then that way, if the total space is actually eight decimal points, I can then use the two decimal points that I'll get to represent the total. So in essence, that $122 I need to express in an exchange rate in micro bitcoins.
Once I do that, then I have the opportunity. Let, let me demonstrate then what this would look like. Because once you have multiple currencies inside your financial system, you have an opportunity to express your goods and services in different prices. <coughs> what we're going to see here, this is an e-commerce site that's built on top of this financial system. It's all fully integrated in real time. Because it's fully integrated and so forth, it allows for transacting business. A modern financial system allows you to do that. It allows you to transact with your customers and do the proper kind of accounting in the back office. You notice here, we actually have a pie that is, I think the best way to show this is, notice down here I have a currency selector. Imagine you're a customer on a website, and you normally work in dollars. Let's just start in dollars from start that way. tried to price it very close to, to the exchange rate just so we can see what's happening. So this air purifier is $122.76 US dollars. Let's suppose you're not in the United States where you have Bitcoin and you want to you want to uh, use Bitcoin. You can effectively use micro bitcoins here and it would be priced at this is effectively one Bitcoin, right? Now I'm not suggesting that this is how you would format that, right? That would be up to the merchants and so forth. But these are some of the concerns that are coming forth, right? If the purchasing power of Bitcoin continues to grow, the decimal points are tripping us up. But this is a choice of the merchant. It's not really relevant for this discussion. The idea, though, is you can imagine that if I were to place an order here, it's going to end up in the backing system for fulfillment. So let's just go to the fulfillment system and place an order. So let's imagine now we're not doing e-commerce over the telephone, or, you know, through the website. We have a customer calling on the telephone, wanting to buy that air purifier. What we would do is we would start the transaction. So I'm going to initiate the transaction as if I'm doing phone sales. I'm going to go ahead and select the customer. want to purchase that same air purifier, which is the A350. Notice here that the same price, $122.76, right? This is fully integrated. But the customer over the phone says, you know what, I'd like to pay in Bitcoin. But what would that cost? There you go. The price it dynamically changes. So the power to the organization that treats Bitcoin as foreign currency in their financial system has the mechanism to automatically and dynamically know the prices of things. Let's go ahead and purchase that. What we've done is we've enhanced the financial system to include Bitcoin because natively it does not have these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, when I save this order, I want to initiate the payment request. I want to make sure it goes out to me. Process. So this would be I'm committing the order. 